It's talking about when you get into the wilderness. Yes, you have to go to the wilderness again. The same way when you came out of Egypt and you went into the wilderness and made the first covenant is the same exact way when you come out of America, which is the modern Egypt, you're going to have to go into the wilderness again. And I will bring you out from the people and will gather you out of the countries wherein you are scattered with a mighty hand and with a stretched out arm and with fury poured out. And I will bring you into the wilderness of the people. And there will I plead with you face to face, like as I pleaded with your fathers in the wilderness of the land of Egypt. So will I plead with you, saith the Lord God. And I will cause you to pass under the rod. And I will bring you into the bond of the covenant. This young brother, once on fire for teaching and who inspired so many to wake up, stopped teaching some years back and took up aquaponics instead. I hope you'll see this video. He was right about the wilderness, he just didn't know where it is. Ironically, after he stopped teaching and took down his videos from YouTube, he became a tilapia fish fanatic. And tilapia fish just so happens to be an extremely popular fish in the wilderness. So let's talk about the wilderness. First, let's reread the scripture that the brother just read from Yao Chazakal, aka Ezekiel, chapter 20, verses 34 to 38. man haramem, wa kabatste avcham man haaratsoth, ashar napotstham bam, bayat chazaka, wa bazoroa natoe, wa bachama shapocha. And I will cause you to exit out from the nations. And I will gather you out from the countries which you were scattered in them by a strong hand and by an outstretched arm and with fury poured out. That was verse 34 of chapter 20. The last clause in this verse, Wakabatste adcham man haaretsoth ashad na potstham bam bayad chazaka wa bazoroai na toe wa bachama shapocha. That clause is not describing how Yao is going to gather his people out of the lands of their captivity. It's describing how he scattered them to those places. OMPP, only Middle Passage people, were scattered to the lands of their captivity with a mighty hand, with an outstretched arm, and with fury poured out. That's how you were scattered. That's not how he is going to gather you. Verse 35. al <laughs> sham. Panem al Panem, and I will cause you to be brought to the wilderness of the nations, and I will be pleaded of you there face to face. So verse thirty four tells us Yao is going to cause his people to exit the nations where he scattered them in his wrath, and verse thirty five tells us he's going to cause them to be brought to a place called the wilderness of the nations. Now is the wilderness of the nations everywhere? No, it can't be, because it has to be a place where Yao gathers his people together, effectively reversing their dispersal. Is it a state of the mind? No, it cannot be, because these two verses clearly indicate a literal migration from physical localities in captivity among the diaspora to a single physical place. So why would it be called the wilderness of the nations, because all nations can trace their origins back to this place. It is humanity's original habitat, contrary to the out-of-Africa theory conjured up by Darwinian evolutionists, pseudoscientists, which has people thinking the Garden of Eden was somewhere in Africa. The true location is an archipelago in the Far East. I will prove that as we continue. Verse 36. Like as I was pleaded by your fathers in the wilderness of the land of Matsram, so will I be pleaded of you, says the Lord Yao. The wilderness of Matsram refers to the desert between the Nile Valley and the Red Sea. As our people crossed that desert and reached the Red Sea, the Egyptian army caught up to our people, and we began to plead with Yao to deliver us, and he did.
verse 37. Wahai barthe avcham tachat hashabat. Wahab athe avcham bama sarath habareth. And I will cause to pass you under the rod, and I will bring you in from defection of the covenant. According to Leviticus 27 and 32, a shepherd makes his sheep to pass under the rod for the purpose of counting them one by one. What this tells us is that Exodus is not going to be a dramatic and televised one million man march in the course of one day. Rather, Yao is going to pick and choose from the masses of his people and cause a select remnant to go to the second wilderness one by one, just as sheep pass under the rod one by one. This is confirmed by Yeram Yao, a.k.a. Jeremiah, chapter 3 and verse 14. And I will take you one from a city and two from a family, and I will bring you, O Tseon. Notice there is no preposition to before the word Tseon or Zion in the source language. The word to is added in the English translations and it is wrong. The woman Tseon is being addressed in this verse with a vocative expression. And she is being told by Yao that he is going to gather her one by one from a city and two by two from a family. He is bringing her out of the lands of her captivity in the west to the land of the second wilderness, which is where she has to go prior to her return to the promised land. The prophet Yeshayao, a.k.a. Isaiah, also confirms that the last exodus will be a one-by-one movement. It will not be a million-man rush to the door to get out all at once. And it will come to pass in that day, Yao will beat off from the stream of the river unto the brook of Matsrem, and you will be collected one by one, O children of Yao Sharal. And it will come to pass in that day, the great Shopar will sound, and they will come, the ones perishing in the land of Ashur, and the outcasts in the land of Matram, and they will worship Yao in the holy mountain in Yerushalayim. These two verses cannot be talking about ancient Matram, Egypt, or ancient Ashur, Assyria. The subject is the lands of pyramids in the New World in the West, which is modern-day Matram and modern-day Ashur, to the people of Yaosharal who were brought there by slave ships during the transatlantic slave trade in fulfillment of the curse of Deuteronomy 28 and 68. The imperfect verb Yahabat, meaning he will beat off, refers to the act of threshing with a stick. A person uses a stick to beat the leaves and branches of a tree in order to make the fruit fall from the branches so he can collect the fruit as it falls to the ground. Verse 12 is telling us that Yao is going to do this from the stream of the river unto the brook of Matram and collect people one by one. Now, these two landmarks, stream of the river and brook of Matram, these are bodies of water at opposite ends of each other. And therefore, what we are dealing with is the extent of the New World from South America with its massive Amazon River to North America with its massive Missouri River. It is the New World in the West in its entirety from South to North. All of the prophets knew that the nation of Yao Sha'al would be collectively brought by ships as slaves to the lands of pyramids in the New World. Verse 13 tells us the movement of the people one by one will begin when the great Chopar is sounded, and then the ones perishing in the land of Ashur and the outcasts in the land of Matsram will leave on their own. Ashur and Matsram in this verse are prophetically the same place i.e. the new world. Notice all four quarters of the world are not in view here. Only the new world in the west is. This is where the people of Yahushua are perishing and where they are outcasts 
These two verses describe their exodus out of the new world. The sound of the great Shopar is what gets them moving, and this sound can be nothing other than the name Yao. It is the return of the name after centuries of absence which initiates this exodus movement. The last part of verse 13 says, They will worship Yao in the holy mountain at Jerusalem. This is where people can easily become confused. The prophets have already made it clear that the remnant of Yahoshua will not go straight from the lands of their captivity to the promised land. They must go to the wilderness first, just like their ancestors did right after the first exodus. So the holy mountain and Jerusalem in this verse is not the geographical Jerusalem that lies in ruins today. The holy mountain and Jerusalem in this verse is referring to the woman Seon who gathers herself together in the second wilderness and builds her own city. This will be the holy mountain and Jerusalem where she will worship Yao until she is ready to leave the wilderness and reclaim the promised land. It's talking about when you get into the wilderness. Yes, you have to go to the wilderness again. The same way when you came out of Egypt and you went into the wilderness and made the first covenant is the same exact way when you come out of America, which is the modern Egypt, you're going to have to go into the wilderness again. The last part of Yao Chazak Al 20 and 37 that we didn't explain is the phrase Hab Athe Avcham Ba Masarath Habareth, and I will bring you in from defection of the covenant. The English translations read bond of the covenant, and this is wrong. The Ghabari word in question does not mean bond unless one assumes it is a spelling error. The lexicons conjecture that it is, and that the root word is asar, which means bind, fetter, shackle, or imprison. The obvious problem with this assumption is that the covenant is not a fetter, shackle, or handcuff, nor is it a prison. Keeping the covenant for Yahosharal is life. The correct root word is not asar. The correct word is sara, which means turning aside and defection. The word appears in this verse in the construct state with a particle prefix and a preposition. What the prophet is saying in this verse is that the second wilderness is the place where Yao brings his people into full compliance with the covenant he made with their ancestors in the first wilderness in the 15th century BC. He will bring them in from defection of that covenant, meaning they will keep the covenant this time and they will never depart from it nor turn aside from it ever again. The prophet Yeram Yao says the same thing, and he says it does not happen until the remnant relocates to the second wilderness. Yeram Yao aka Jeremiah chapter 31 verses 1 and 2. In that time, says Yao, I will be for the Allah aim to all the families of Yao Sharal, and they will be to me for a nation. Thus says Yao. It found grace in the wilderness, the nation escaped of the sword, when I went to cause it to rest, Yahoshar all. It's interesting how Christianity in the Greek New Testament has misled people and has them thinking to skip over these two verses in this chapter and jump straight to verse 31, which talks about the new covenant. But as you can see, according to Yoram Yao, there won't be a new covenant until after the remnant of Yahoshar all relocates to the second wilderness. That is where their curses end. That is where they find grace. That is where Yao causes them to rest, not before. Just as the first covenant was not made until the people exited Matsraim and went to the wilderness, the new covenant, which is simply the same first covenant but renewed and written on the heart, will not be made until the remnant exits the new world and moves to the second wilderness. Verse 38. Wa Barote ha Maradem. Wa ha Pasha Embe. Ma Otam. Wa Ya
And I will purge from you the ones who rebel, and the ones who transgress against me. From the land of their wandering I will bring them forth, but to the land of Yahosharal not will he come, and you will know that I am Yao. This is a very important verse of the wilderness scriptures. It tells us that there is only one correct wilderness location. There are not several different wilderness locations. It tells us that Yao is going to purge the rebels and transgressors from among his chosen remnant. These people will be brought forth from the new world. But notice carefully that the verse does not say they will be brought to the wilderness. They are not going to the wilderness. These are OMPP claiming the heritage but disobeying Yao's instructions. They are doing their own thing and making up their own way. This verse says, when we see this, we will know that he is Yao, and we are already seeing it. Many OMPP are leaving the new world, but they are going everywhere except where the prophets tell us we must go. That is Yao, and that is his purge. When the woman has finished her time in the second wilderness, and she returns to the promised land, verse 38 tells us the rebels and the transgressors will not be allowed to participate in the return to our land. If you're just interested in your own individual success and happiness, then you do whatever you want. You go wherever you want to go. But if you wish to be a part of the restoration that Yao is doing for his chosen remnant, a restoration that will ultimately put them in charge of this world, then you must follow his plays from his playbook. You cannot make up and run your own plays. You must do exactly what Yao is telling you to do and go exactly where he is telling you to go. It's talking about when you get into the wilderness. Yes, you have to go to the wilderness again. The same way when you came out of Egypt and you went into the wilderness and made the first covenant, it's the same exact way when you come out of America, which is the modern Egypt, you're going to have to go into the wilderness again. He was right about this. I'm going to keep saying it because I want him to know he was right. But how do I know I'm right about the location of the second wilderness? How do I know it is an archipelago? Yeshai Yao, a.k.a. Isaiah, chapter 41 and verse 1. Hach resho ale em, wala amem yach lepo hach, yagasho az yadabaro yachado la mashpat nakaraba. Keep silent before me, islands, and the people will renew strength. They will approach, then they will speak together. For judgment, let us come near. The only reason the Allah aim of Yahoo Sharal would be telling a group of islands to be silent, to be quiet, to shut up, so that his people can renew strength, is because that archipelago is the second wilderness where their strength will be renewed. This group of islands is ordered by Yahoo to let the restoration of his nation take place in their own country. The people will come, and they will come together for judgment to keep the commandments of Yao. So there is no doubt that the second wilderness is an archipelago. But how do I know this archipelago is in the Far East? Yesha Yao, chapter 24, verse 15. Rochan, ba'orim chabado Yao, ba'e hayam, sham Yao, ale'e Yao shar'al. Therefore, in the fires, glorify Yao. In the islands of the sea, the name Yao, the Alaim of Yao Sharal. The word Orem in this verse, translated fires, refers to the sunlight that shines from the Far East. It is the ultimate origin of the word Orient. This verse is a command to the remnant of Yao Sharal that they must glorify Yao in an archipelago of the sea in the Far East. This is a direct order not a suggestion. There is only one archipelago of the sea in the Far East where the name Yao has been reintroduced to the world by Yao through a ravenous bird and from where that name is now being proclaimed to OMPP in the West and that is the Philippines. The true name returns from an archipelago in the Far East. This is how you know these other names are fake. Did the name Jehovah come out of here? No. Did the name Yahweh come out of here? No. Did the name Yahweh 
come out of here? No. Did the name Yahuwah come out of here? No. Did the name Ahaya come out of here? No. The only name that has come out of the Far East from an archipelago of the sea is the name Yao that I started proclaiming and that name is now being praised by OMPP in the West. Like it, don't like it, it's a fact. The first wilderness was the place where Masha received the answer to the question, Mashamo, what is his name? The second wilderness is the place from where that name returns to the world. That is your beacon. That is your rallying point. The place where he has chosen to put his true name. If his name is not Yao, nothing I teach is valid. If his name is Yao, and it most certainly is, then the second wilderness is located in the Philippines and nowhere else. So what is the second wilderness for? Why does the remnant need to go there? Because we cannot be restored as a people within the lands of our captivity in the new world. That is not why Yao brought us there by ships. He brought us there to be punished and to show us no favor. Yeram Yao, a.k.a. Jeremiah, chapter 16, verse 13. Wahatlathe Atham Magal Haaratz Hazaath Gal Haaratz Ashala Yadaitham Atham Wa Abathecham Wa Rabatham Sham Ath Alaim Acharem Yomam Walela Ashala Athan Lacham Hanena. And I will cause you to be thrown out from upon this land, upon a land which you do not know, you or your fathers, and you will serve there other gods, day after day and night, which I will not give you favor. And this one verse sums up your history in the New World ever since you arrived on those slave ships in the 15th century AD, and ever since you embraced the religions and the idolatry of your slave masters. Nothing you've done to try to uplift yourselves as a people has worked. This is because Yao is not allowing you to prosper and to be successful as a people in that land. You are under curses in that land. The second wilderness is where your curses will finally stop. They don't stop as long as you stay there. You have to leave. And this is why the prophets command you to leave. Mecha, a.k.a. Micah, chapter 2 and verse 10. Komo wallacho che lazaath hamanucha ba gabor tam'a tha chabal wa chabal namarats. Get up and get out, for this is not a resting place, because it is polluted. It will destroy even a grievous destruction. This verse proves that no one is coming to get you. You must be proactive, obey the voice of Yao, and leave on your own. Zachar Yao, a.k.a. Zechariah, chapter 2 and verse 7. Ho'e tse'on, hamlate yoshabath bath babal. Woe tse'on, deliver yourself, the one dwelling with the daughter of Babylon. The daughter of Babylon is the new world, and specifically the United States of America, which is the strongest nation on earth. You must deliver yourself, deliver yourself from her. This does not mean that you will do it all alone. Yahweh is with you and he will guide you. But it does mean you cannot just sit on your hands and wait. You yourself must take concrete steps, save your money, plan accordingly, and get yourselves out. Get yourselves out and get to the wilderness. Even though you have to be proactive and not sit around waiting for the sky to open, and even though you are commanded to deliver and to save yourself, it is Yao who is causing you to do this. He is the one gathering you because you are choosing to obey his voice. He will help you and remove obstacles out of your way. He is the one alluring you to leave and causing you to go to the second wilderness. Hoshai, a.k.a. Hosea, chapter 2, verses 14 and 15. Lachan, Hana, Anache Mapatheha, Wa Holachtheha, Hamadba, Wadabarthe, Gal Labha, Wa Nathathe Laha, Af Harameha, Masham, Wa Af Hamach Raho Lapathach Thako, Wa Ranatha Shama, Ha Yame Na Oreha, Wa Chayom Ralatha Maaratz Matsurem. Therefore, behold, I am the one alluring her and I will cause her to go to the wilderness, and I will speak upon her heart. And I will give to her her own vineyards from there, and the valley of Rakhor for a door of hope. And she will sing there like the days of her youth, and like the day she came up out of the land of Matsrem.
It's a two-way street. He allures you and speaks upon your heart. And if you respond accordingly and deliver yourself, then he gets all the credit for gathering you and bringing you to the second wilderness. And you are not going there to twiddle your thumbs. You are going there to establish your own base, your own city, with your own land and your own vineyards. And you will dwell set apart in an exclusive area just for you. And Yahweh will rebuild you as a nation there. And you will sing there like the day when he delivered your forefathers from the first Matram and the first house of bondage. The second wilderness is a valley of Rachor, a.k.a. Echor, and a door of hope for you because the valley of Rachor in our history is where Yahweh turned from the fierceness of his wrath against his people. In the second wilderness, there will be no more wrath. Instead, Yahweh is going to bless you, make you wealthy and powerful, and transform you into the strongest nation on earth. It's talking about when you get into the wilderness. Yes, you have to go to the wilderness again. The same way when you came out of Egypt and you went into the wilderness and made the first covenant is the same exact way when you come out of America, which is the modern Egypt, you're going to have to go into the wilderness again. Yao is the one who cursed you, and he is the only one who can uncurse you. He alone knows how to bind up your wounds as a people. He alone knows exactly what medicine to prescribe for you. You need quiet and secure dwellings. Dwellings where you are never worried if your loved ones make it home at night. Dwellings where you are never concerned about your child playing outside with a toy gun, but gunned down by an officer who pretends his life was in danger and that your child had a real gun. You need to leave those lands in the West where you have no bargaining chips or leverage of any kind. In a system designed to gentrify, kill, and incarcerate as many of you as it possibly can. And to go where Yao tells you to go. The city you will have in the second wilderness is talked about in many places by the prophets. Yesha Yao, a.k.a. Isaiah, chapter 32, verses 15 to 20. Gad Yaira Galeno Roch Mamarom, Wahe Madba Lacharamal, Wahacharamal La Yair Ya Chashab, Wa Shechan Ba Madbar Mashpat, Wa Sadaka Bacharamal Tashab, Wahe Maisha Hatsadaka Shalom. Wa Rabadath had Sadaka Hashkat, Wabatach Rad Rolam, Wayashab Rame Bano Shalom, Waba Mashahanoth, Mabatach Em, Waba Nochaf Shaana Noth, Wabarad Baradath Ha Yair, Wabashapala Tashapal Ha Rare, Asherecham Zorai Ral Hal Mem, Mashalache Ragal Hashur, Wahachamor. Until power will be poured out upon us from on high, and the wilderness will be a vineyard. And the vineyard will be reckoned a wooded mountain, and judgment will dwell in the wilderness, and righteousness will remain in the vineyard, and the righteous work will be shalom, and righteous service will be quietness and security always. And my nation will dwell in a habitation of shalom, and in secure dwellings, and tranquil resting places, even when it hails falling down. The wooded mountain and in the low place, it will fall beneath the city. Blessed are you the ones sowing beside all waters, the ones sending forth the foot of the ox and the ass. The power of Yao will be poured out upon you in the second wilderness, and you will be a vineyard in a wooded mountain where judgment and righteousness dwells. You will live securely in habitations of Shalom. Even if there is a hailstorm up in your elevated mountain city, the hail will fall lower than your city. You will be blessed to sow fields by abundant water sources, and you will own your own livestock. Once you are alone and set apart unto Yao, he will heal you. You already know how to build successful businesses, companies with multi-million dollar brands. You know how to grow. You know how to take care of your own. But Yao does not want it to take place in the lands where he shipped you to be slaves. He will make it happen in the second wilderness where you will keep his covenant. Mecha, a.k.a. Micah, chapter 7, verse 14. Rai Ramcha, ba Shabbat Chatsa'an nachalavcha, shachane labadad yair, bathoch charamal, yarai o bashan wagalaid, cha yame rolam. Feed your nation with your rod, the flock of your heritage, which dwells isolated in the wooded mountain, in the midst of a vineyard. They will feed bashan and galaid, 
like the days of old. The prophets keep repeating that the remnant of Yahushua'ah will take up residence in a wooded mountain where they will be a self-contained city and they will have a fruitful vineyard. This is the second wilderness where the nation will be fed and nourished back to health. Its strength will be completely revived and renewed there. Bashan and Galide were the places in the Holy Land best suited for livestock and cattle. The best of the best livestock came from these places. They are mentioned here because the remnant will be the best of the best. They will possess their own livestock in their own vineyards way up in their set-apart wooded mountain city. They do not come to mix and to mingle, nor to assimilate. They come to set themselves apart and to dwell solitarily. We've established that there is a second wilderness that the remnant of Yahushua'al must go to. We've established where this second wilderness is, why you must go, and what things you will be doing with yourselves while you are there until it is time for you to leave and return to the promised land. The prophets even describe the mode of travel that you will use in order to get to the wilderness. Even that detail is mentioned. Zechar Yao chapter 5 verses 5 to 11. Wa yats ha malach ha debarbe wa ya ama ale shah na genecha wa raa ma ha yots ath ha zaath wa ama ma he a wa ya ama zaath ha e pa ha yots ath wa ya ama zaath genam bachal ha arats wa hana chachar gat parath na shath wa zaath ha shachath yo shabat patho ha e pa wa ya ama zaath ha rashai wa ya shalach ath ha Al tocha epa, wa yashalach af aban ha raparath al peha, wa asha rene, wa ar, wa hana, shatem nashem, yotza oath, wa roch ba chanape ham, wa la hana, chanapem ha chanape ha chaseda, wa tash ana af ha epa, bain ha arats, wa bain ha shemem, wa amar al hamal ach ha debar be, ana hama, mola choth af ha epa. Wa amar ale la banoth laha beth ba'arats shanair wa hochan wa ha nechasham gal machanatha and went forth the angel the one speaking with me and he said to me lift up please your eyes and see what is this that is going forth and i said what is it and he said that is the apa that is going forth and he said that is their eye in all the land and behold a talent of lead lifted up and this one woman sitting in the midst of the apa. And he said, This is the wicked. And he sent her into the midst of the apa. And he sent the stone of lead to its mouth. And I lifted up my eyes and looked, and behold, two women coming out, and wind in their wings, and to them wings like the wings of a stork. And they lifted up the apa between the earth and between the heaven. And I said to the angel, the one speaking with me, To where are these bearing the apa? And he said to me, To build for her a house in the land of Shanair, and it will be established and set up there upon her own base. In the first part of this much discussed but little understood vision, the prophet is told to behold an apa going forth. An apa is a container or receptacle for holding dry goods such as flour, grain, or corn. As the prophet beholds the apa going forth, the angel tells him, this is their eye in all the land. Then we are told there is a woman inside the apa and a stone of lead on the cover. The first part of the vision obviously deals with the forced migration that Yahushua'al had to endure, which ultimately landed them in the lands of pyramids in the New World in the West as slaves. That was their eye in all the land, meaning their collective fate as a nation. In the second part of the vision, the prophet sees what looks like two women with wings like a stork, and they lift up the apa and fly it away. The message is clear. You were brought by ships to the new world for punishment of your wickedness. That was the apa going forth in the first part of the vision. But you will leave the new world by air travel, according to the second part of the vision. The two women fly the apa to a place called Shania. This word is the word that the flood survivors gave to the fertile crescent after they migrated from the ark's landing in the east on the tallest mountain in the world. It is not a Sumerian word, and it is not an Akkadian word. 
The word has no cognate in any language. It is Shapabarora, the pure language, i.e. Ghabare. The only reason Masha would say that the first name of Mesopotamia after the Great Flood was Shanair in Genesis 11 and 2, when this isn't a Sumerian or Akkadian word, is because the language before and immediately after the Great Flood, prior to the Tower of Babel, was not Sumerian or Akkadian. The language before and immediately after the Great Flood, prior to the Tower of Babel, was the language Yao spoke to Masha with. Shanair combines the particle prefix Sha with the noun Nair. The word means that which is nascent. It is an appropriate word to describe both the lush and well-watered region in the far east where Nach, a.k.a. Noah, lived prior to the flood, as well as what became the new ground zero for humanity and the cradle of civilization after the flood, because the fertile crescent was initially the best place in the world to grow newly domesticated plants and crops after the flood. And since Shania is really a pre-flood word, a word that the flood survivors brought with them from the east after the ark landed on the mountains of Ararat, a.k.a. Mount Everest, the word Shania originally described the most fertile part of the world prior to the Great Flood. That part of the world is in the far east where the Garden of Radan or Eden existed. This proves by scripture that the second wilderness is called the wilderness of the nations because it is where the Garden of Radan was located, the original habitat of man. The two women in the vision, who are really machines that fly, i.e. jumbo jets, they carry the woman to Shania to build her a house and to establish her there upon her own base. This is what the second wilderness is for. It is for you to have your own base where you will be left alone so that you may be restored and raised to your feet as a nation. You were brought to the new world by slave ships. Your exodus out of the new world will be in airplanes. Let's back up the mode of travel with modern airplanes using another scripture so that we have at least two witnesses. And then we will discuss the time of the Exodus by when the remnant should prepare to depart and move to the second wilderness. Hoshai, a.k.a. Hosea, chapter 11, verses 10 and 11. Achare yao yalacho, chaare yasha'ag, cheho yasha'ag, wo yacharado banem mayam, yacharado chat sopor mamatsreim, after Yao will they walk, and like a lion he will roar, for he will roar and they will be startled, the children from the west. They will be startled, like a bird out of Matram, and like a dove out of the land of Ashur. And I will cause them to be put upon their own homes, says Yao. The children from the West are none other than OMPP brought to the West by slave ships to modern-day Matram and Ashur, which is North America, Central America, the Caribbean, and South America. They will be startled like birds and fly out of those lands after they hear Yao roar like a lion. The lion's majestic roar was designed by Yao, and the lion's roar produces the pronunciation of his holy name. <laughs> This prophecy is telling us that when the name above all names returns, the true name, and the children in the West hear it, it will be a roar that startles them and stirs them up, and like birds who hear a loud noise, they will take off and fly. Where are they flying to? To the second wilderness, where Yao will put them in their own homes, in their own city, rebuild them as a nation, and prepare them to reclaim the promised land. It's talking about when you get into the wilderness. 
Yes, you have to go to the wilderness again. The same way when you came out of Egypt and you went into the wilderness and made the first covenant is the same exact way when you come out of America, which is the modern Egypt, you gonna have to go into the wilderness again. When? When should the remnant go to the wilderness? With all of these scriptures that we've gone over, which talk in such great detail about the second wilderness, and there are many more I didn't discuss in order to keep this video from being too long, there should be a time given in the scriptures for when the last exodus is due to begin. And sure enough, there is. Yesha Yao, a.k.a. Isaiah, chapter 30, verses 26 and 27. Wahe or halabana ha or ha chama. Wa or ha chama ya e shabaitem ha or shabaitayemem bayom chabas yao ath shabaramo wa machats machato yarap. Hana sham yao ba mamarachak bayar apo. Wachabad mash a shapateo mal ao zaim walashono chaash achalaf. And it will come to pass. The light of the moon is like the light of the sun. And the light of the sun will be sevenfold. Like the light of seven days. In the day, Yao is the one binding up the bruise of his nation. And the stroke of its beating he will heal. Behold, the name Yao comes from far away, burning in its anger. And the burden is heavy. Its lips are full of indignation, and its tongue is like a devouring fire. The prophecy is obviously not literal. Why? Because if the moon's light were ever to increase to the intensity of the sun's light, and if the sun's light were ever to be increased sevenfold, the oceans would evaporate and the earth would be incinerated. That's why. But the solution is nearby. The moon and the sun are signs for time reckoning according to Genesis 1.14. The biblical year is 364 days because the basic unit of time is the seven-day week, instituted at creation, and there are 52 weeks in a year. In order for the light of the moon to be as the light of the sun, you need to have 3,636 mean synodic months in the course of 294 years. This amounts to a minimum of 107,373 lunar days and a maximum of of 107,380 lunar days. That's the number of days it takes for the light of the moon to be as the light of the sun because the sun accumulates 107,380 days in the course of 294 years. In other words, the lunar equivalent of the biblical 364-day calendar in 294 years is 3,636 lunar months. Therefore, the light of the sun is a 294-year period because that's how many years it takes for a 364-day calendar to realign and harmonize with the sun's motion after 364 days or 52 weeks have been added to the calendar in the course of 294 years. When you multiply the light of the sun sevenfold, the resulting figure is 2,058 years. The figure 2,058 years is 42 jubilee cycles of 49 years each. What this scripture in Encrypted Message in a Bottle is telling you is that Yao will begin to bind up the bruise of his nation and heal the stroke of its beating after a period of 2,058 years of bruises and beatings have run their course over his people. So when did a period of 2,058 years of bruises and beatings of our people begin? They began when the Edomite, Herod the Great, captured Yaroshalom with the aid of the Romans in 36 BC. An Edomite became king over you in your own land, and you have been beaten, bruised, and wounded ever since. These beatings have followed you all the way to the land of pyramids in the New World, where Yao brought all 13 tribes of you by ships to make you collectively suffer Egyptian-style slavery all over again. And your beatings didn't stop with Lincoln's Emancipation Proclamation in 1863, did they? We are currently living in the 42nd Jubilee Cycle. It began in the year 1975. It ends in the year 2023. That is why the holy name Yao returned from far away at the end of this period and blazed forth from the far east where the sun rises via a ravenous bird. The name did not come back with hugs and kisses, high fives, serenades, and lollipops. It came back with rage. It came back with a tongue of fire. 2023 is not the end of the world. UFOs will not be coming to get you. But if you are part of the remnant and you long to return to the keeping of the covenant, 2023 
is the year you need to be in the second wilderness because that is the year Yao begins to bind up the wounds of his nation. Some will come before 2023. Others will continue to come after 2023. But that is the year of the Exodus and the year of the establishment of Mount Seon upon her own base in the second wilderness. I remember when I didn't